Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I know I've been gone for a while, but I am back and I'll be posting some new content for you, so stay tuned. Today, I'll be making my famous lemon curd. This is one of my most requested flavors. To begin, I will be cooking my lemon curd over a bain-marie. Now, what that is, is a heat-resistant bowl placed over a pot of simmering water. You want to make sure that your water is simmering. You don't want a rapid boil because you don't want that hot water to come in contact with the bottom of the bowl because it will cook your eggs too fast and they will end up uh, scrambling. So you definitely don't want scrambled eggs. So right here, I'm just mixing my eggs with my dry ingredients before I add my lemon juice. Now I will list all the ingredients in the description box below. Now this batch was a quadruple batch because I needed it for several projects, but I will be listing the ingredients for a single batch. That way you can go ahead and double it, triple it, quadruple it, or make as much as you need to make. Now you wanna make sure that you are constantly stirring this mixture. You wanna uh, go from your whisk to your spatula, cleaning down the sides of that bowl because the steam is going to be coming up on the sides of that bowl and it will be cooking the outside of the, the mixture before the inside. So you want to make sure that you are constantly whisking the uh, curd and also scraping down the sides. As you can see here, how it's cooking a little faster than the rest of the curd. So you just want to make sure that that, that doesn't uh, end up being uh, scrambled eggs. So a single batch is going to take you about 10 to 12 minutes of constant stirring. Because this was such a large batch, it took me about 20 to 25 minutes. So I will be uh, speeding this up for you because I know you guys don't want to sit and watch me stir this for about 25 minutes. So I went ahead and speed, speed that up for you. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but just make sure that you are constantly stirring your batch no matter how much you're making. You just want to make sure it's constantly moving so you don't have scrambled eggs. Now, if you forget to set your timer, a sure way to notice uh, when your curd is almost done is, as you can see here, that it's not as frothy. So in the beginning of the process, your mixture was super frothy, but towards the end when it's almost done, you can see that the froth has kind of dissipated and mixed in to the curd and you're left with this really bright yellow mixture. Now once that happens and all your foam is gone, you wanna add in your butter and you wanna mix it until it's completely melted. Now one thing that I did forget to do is I did forget to video the part where you strain it, which is very vital. You wanna make sure you strain your mixture because even though you are mixing it constantly, there will be some little bits of egg that have cooked a little bit too fast. So you don't want those little bits of egg in your finished product. So you wanna make sure you, um, strain it before you uh, place it in the fridge. Now here I'm just making an ice bath, which helps the uh, cooling process since I, make, since I made such a big batch. So it's just some ice and water in a larger bowl and then I place my cooked curd in uh, on top of that. And then here I'm placing some saran wrap on top and you wanna make sure that plastic wrap is touching the very top of that curd so a skin does not form while it's cooling. Um, if you have any open spots or it's not completely touching, a skin will form and it will become really gummy and chewing. You don't want any of those little bits in there. So you should cool for about 46 hours or I like to chill it overnight. Once that's done, you should have the consistency of sour cream and it'll be ready for um, cakes, cupcakes, or lemon tarts. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you come back to see some more.